sure my, my, my Lagrangians, and as I said before, I want them uh, spin oriented, uh, well, perhaps compact oriented and spin. So <clears throat> suppose I give two, two of these Lagrangians, and perhaps let me use some color here. And then um, I'm not going to write too much, carry too much on the notation, but you have these, uh, these flat connections or local systems on them. Uh, on um, on the, the trivial bundle flat, E1 connections. And um, assume for the moment that these Lagrangians, they intersect transversely. So then um, I'll build you um, uh, their complex, which, which will be, because they are compact, they will be generated by finite sum of, uh, of intersection points. Mm. And then here, I do have to use uh, some non-standard field called the Novkov field, which is um, which seems as um, formal sum of um, a i t to lambda i. So I. I it, um, kind of looks like power series, but with the difference that, well, the AI can belong for a, a chosen ground field. I want to think today perhaps it's C. And um, uh, the important part is that the lambda i's, they are real, and they satisfy that they cannot accumulate in a in finite number. They, they need to go to infinity. And this needs to, we need to use this sort of formal parameter to take care of areas of the disks for the theory to work. So, <clears throat> so this, this is our for complex and the, and before, um, so as of now assume that, so before I tell you uh, what should be the for homology, I'll tell you what properties they, uh, they will have. And the first one, if I want to, uh, to do homology theory here, the first one that you can see is that the rank of, uh, we write down like this, whatever homology I cook up without this, uh, with this complex, we would definitely less or equal than the number of uh, intersection points between L1 and L2. And, um, but the other very important part, so this, um, uh, this floor theory came out exactly to understand uh, this intersection theory between um, Lagrangians that, that are invariant under Hamiltonian um, isotopy. So if you, have, if you have a Hamiltonian, Um, on x uh, omega, re remember this like the time one flow of Hamiltonian vector fields. Um, so then you can, um, what we have is an isomorphism between the floor homology of L1 and L2 with the floor homology of, um, between L1 and L2. So in particular, what you have that if this is non-zero, if this is non-zero, then um, uh, this being non-zero means that I cannot, means that I will always have intersections between L1 and phi of L2, regardless of the Hamiltonian I take. So we say that we cannot displace L1 from L2. And um, so that's, what this, uh, that's why this really encodes. You usually want to understand Lagrangian model Hamiltonian isotopies. 
and this understands the intersection theory of them. Um, so the goal, I, f I feel I wanted to say something else. Oh, yes. Um, for instance, now, if the intersection using this, once you prove this, when you have transverse intersection, then, for instance, um, if you don't have transverse intersection, you can just perturb your Lagrangian and define the flow homology to be equal to the Hamiltonian perturbation of your Lagrangian so that the intersection is transverse, and this will not depend the way you perturbed it. Uh, so in particular, you can define flow homology between the Lagrangian and with itself and understand uh, non-self-displacement uh, self of, um, of a Lagrangian. Yes? Uh, this, the, the, it's, it's isomorphic. Yeah. <clears throat> Perhaps something with, with ingredients, but... Hmm? Have the same? Oh, uh, I, 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 I still, I, I'll say the goal is to, for us to define a differential and then I will study obstructiveness and, and things like that. Uh, this is under the carpet. So, um, yes, so this thing, we, can all, we cannot always define this, the, this, this flow homology, so this is important. Uh, so um, our goal, our goal is to define um, our goal is to define a differential that counts holomorphic strips um, that counts holomorphic strips u and uh, I, I just want to know if I want the r first or the otherwise I get all confused. So holomorphic strips into your symplectic manifold and um, so here I use S coordinate and here I use T coordinate. So, well, before I write down um, its property, uh, I, can th uh, I can do the following. What these holomorphic strips should do, suppose you have one of your Lagrangians and the other Lagrangian, and then they they are intersecting here in uh, two points, P and Q. Then what I want is a, is a strip that such that this is basically white, such that one boundary of the strips lives on L1 and the other boundary of the strips live on the L2. And when when you uh, your parameter s goes to infinity or minus infinity, it converts to p and q. So, <clears throat> so I think probably Gonzalo used this notation to say that, um, uh, of course, this here you have a standard standard complex structure. So, um, uh, the barge uh, u equals to zero. Well, with these coordinates. It just tells you that du ds plus j du dt needs to be zero. Um, and then I write down what I told you that u of s zero, uh, should, should I call l zero and l two? Uh, I'll, I'll go with l one and l two, whatever. Let's just shift by one. u of l, uh, s zero, is in L1, U of S1 is in L2. The limit when S goes to plus infinity of your curve should be Q in the intersection. And the limit when S goes to minus infinity um, of UST should be p, and then 
you also uh, require that the energy of U, uh, which you can write, the, for instance, the integral, you don't want this derivative to, 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 to explode. And it's essentially the, 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 the area of your strip in the end. So you, you do want uh, this energy to be, to be finite. OK? Um, so our goal is to define some differential that count these strips. So then we build our moduli space, corresponding moduli space. <clears throat> So M, P, Q, then I choose, I will choose relative, um, this is like disks with boundary in L1 and L2. Um, I choose this relative class and, uh, well, a priori this could depend on J. And this, is the maps U satisfying a star such that the relative homology class of U should be equal to beta. And of course, this is a star. Yes? You could you could have it's it's weird, but uh, depending on the parameterization, actually on on strip breaking, is that what happens? The 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 derivative could could be exploding towards one of the ends. No, the it it feels that the points are um, are going to P and Q, and then and then the uh, and then the then you, you should you should you should be able to topologically uh, glue the thing and, and and compute your energy and not be finite. But this this derivative could be could be converging to to infinity here in the end. So um. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll think a bit more about that, and then we can discuss later. So, oh, one thing that I want you to note is um, is that R cross zero one is biholomorphic to um, to just uh, d2 minus minus 1 and, and, and 1. So you can actually th kind of think the uh, you can think about this um, as being you can think the model as being maps from the disk to uh, to the Lagrangians with this uh, asymptotic conversions, and um, uh, and yes, this uh, this model is, is easier to 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 write down the the uh, holomorphic equation, and um, so I do want to say that E star is a Freldon. Problem, and uh, you do have a Freldon index. Uh, the Freldon index becomes um, uh, Freldon index becomes topological. So you do have some expected dimension of your model space will be then the Freldon index of uh, uh, this linearized the uh, linearization of this operator, 
And uh, this happens to be an index that will depend on, um, on the relative homology class. This is called the Maslow index. I won't have too much time to define to you what's the Maslow index. But in this talk, I just want to say, for instance, example, this, this strip here has Maslow, uh, this is an R2. This is a picture, and actually R2. These pictures, you can represent whatever you want. This is an R2. This has Maslow index one. Okay. So what to define? Del um, of P to be the sum of, um, of Q's in L1, L2, and beta such that they have this Maslow index I uh, called mu, Maslow index is one of, well, you do have your moduli space, PQ uh, beta, J, and uh, another good thing about writing it like this is that you can see that uh, R translations uh, generate a free action on this space, so you mod out can mod out by R, so something that has expected dimension one becomes something that has expected dimension zero. Then um, you count these guys. And then you want to, this kind of like be the coefficient of Q. But then for the theory to work, you need to really uh, encode the T to the omega beta, perhaps I'll write here. Um, and um, holonomy, um, holonomy of uh, your oh some some holonomy on the boundary of beta and well let me explain this a little bit so I put in blue because. This is uh, wha where these, um, these connections enter. So if you want, you, co you consider that you have the trivial connection and don't consider this case. It already helps you to understand fluoromology. But in general, when we have these, um, these flat connections, you want to say, OK, you, uh, you start with your, uh, if your trivial bundle over P, so you have a C there, so take, take a one there. And then your first connection tells you how, how to move, how this one starts moving within this path. So you comes up with E to the theta something. Then you, you identify key, uh, the, line, the trivial line bundles on Q from L1 with the one in L2. Then you keep moving using then the, the second connection, and then you come with a unitary number. And that's the holonomy on the boundary of your <clears throat> um, of your cycle there. And um, so to really consider this, uh, to really define this, you have to consider a lot of things. <clears throat> First of them that are not talk too much, and I assume that we have is transversality. Second of them uh, will be compactness. 
So how do we compactify this, this moduli space? And this will involve the bubbling phenomena that I'm sure you, see, you saw on, on Gonzalo's lecture. Then, uh, well, so I, I'm, I'm really counting here in Z. So you, you need to, to orient uh, your moduli space. And this is due to the choice, this is related to the choice of the spin structure uh, that, you, that you choose in each one of your Lagrangians. So I'll not comment much more on that either. And well, the main issue is, does the e squared to 0? <clears throat> so before going to the nitty gritty details of this, I do want to give one example where it does e squared to 0. Well, it's a fact. And you will see after, soon you'll see why. Uh, if, um, if you don't have a space to have holomorphic uh, spheres on X or, um, or even, more, more, even more, more importantly, um, for, for this question to zero, what's important really is that you don't have disks, for instance, with boundary on your Lagrangian. So holomorphic disk would have to have area. And then you assume that this area is zero. Then this question to zero. So I'm telling you that to already give you some flavor what uh, floor homology is. And then um, in all my examples, unfortunately, it's going to be in one dimension. So suppose I am t star of s1. So I have l1. Then perhaps in green, I'll have l2. Here, I'm going to consider the points P and Q, and here you clearly see that you have this disk U. Here you see that you have this disk V. Uh, not only that, you definitely see that we have that. And uh, we do have, um, you, do, you, you do have that as well. So you have these two disks. So our fur complex for these two guys is just generated by P and Q. And well, if you follow carefully the fact that uh, it needs to go from P to Q with L1 in the bottom and L2 in the top, um, you see that um, you see that actually none of these disks will contribute to the differential of Q. And actually, both of these disks contribute to the differential of P. And then uh, it's a matter of you understanding how these moduli space are oriented. But depending on how you choose uh, your spin structure, you're going to get this plus or minus. But what will always happen is that you're going to have um, this sign to be, to be negative, uh, Q. OK? So then what, uh, what floor theory is telling us in this case is that this differential is equal to 0 if and only if or you have a non-zero floor homology. I can even write here. Uh, is non zero if and only if these strips have the same area. Um, and um, moreover, in this exp 
a specific example, these strips will have this, the, the same area, I'm going to put in parentheses, if and only if L1 is actually Hamiltonian isotopic. You can bring L1 to L2 using um, Hamiltonian isotopy. And if the areas are different, you would be able to bring L2. So L2 is my, my green one, I didn't write. But you would be able to, to bring L2 to some other level parallel to this one, whose area is actually given by, by the difference of these areas. So <clears throat> um, in one dimension, you actually don't really need much fluid theory to prove non-displaceability, but you can use it. Um, and now, oh, yes, I want. Yes, if you, if, if, if you have area preserving isotopy, they, they will preserve, yes, yes, yes. So on surface, so our examples will be on surface because they, they are clear, but as I said, you don't really need fluid theory to, to really prove the flux is an invariant and, uh, and so on, but uh, I do want to give you some taste or some examples with fluid theory, and then I just want to mention that this, um, But also, uh, I want to show that the flow homology is non-zero. It could be that flow homology is zero and things are still, are still non-displaceable in principle. But uh, I just want to mention that you have the same on the on elliptic curves, you'd have the same, exactly the same computation goals. Um, <clears throat> so from now on, I, I'm only going to assume that I have uh, some trust, uh, transversality. which means that I can choose my, my uh, J such that everything I want works, and I do want to focus on compactness. And um, so there are three types, um, and this is due to, to the work of Bromov. There are three types of compactness that appears. And um, the first one is bubbling. So interior bubbling or sphere bubbling. Let me write down like that. So sphere bubbling, what is this? Well, you have your uh, your Lagrangians here, you have points, and then suppose your holomorphic disk then starts creating, doing something like this, the derivative starts increasing, and then in a limit you could have, you could have a sphere bubble on the interior. And you could actually have, as I'm sure Gonzalo pointed, you could have trees of um, these sphere bubblings. So, as soon as you have a sophisticated enough theory to deal with that, the moduli space of this configura configuration, so the expected dimension of this configuration, has co-dimension two with respect to the moduli space that we started with. So, um, let me write down uh, like this, co-dimension greater or equal than two in, um, in your moduli space, uh, if you allow it to, to compactify. So um, we have seen, we have seen examples of MOS3, this uh, Lagrange, uh, Hamiltonian floor theory, that uh, we, usually what we want is, well, for instance, after I mod out by R, I start, uh, I define my differential with zero dimensional manifolds, then to, to look at uh, d square, I look for uh, one dimensional manifolds. So, um, so if these are expected to happen in, in, in co dimension two, they are not expected to be really interfering with uh, d square. So, this, this is not so much of a problem, but one thing that this, um, this actually interferes for us is this bubbling. And then um, 
this bubbling is the following. We have here Lagrangian. Then suppose that these strips start forming uh, the derivative start exploding nearby on the boundary of um, of your um, of your uh, of your disk, so that in a limit there is a disk that uh, bubbles off, and. Um, Really, for us, the problem will be um, since we um, and this this has still boundary on L two. So, as I said, we we'll, uh, we'll use um, we are we are going to be looking for one dimensional spaces after we model out by R. So we'll be looking to Maslow index two strips. So. The bubble that really will cause us some problems are well. If you have negative, uh, if you have bubbles of Maslow index uh, less or equal than two, cause problems for um, d two square to zero. Okay, and um, and the third breaking is what's the analog to the Morse breaking that we have beautifully uh, Martha explained it for us very well on Monday. So we have strip breaking. So Let's say this is L1, this is L2. You have P, you have Q, and then uh, here in the middle, I may have some other R. So <clears throat> our holomorph disks may break like this, and this this is what contributes. To uh, to d square, and then so what we have is if we are able to rule out bubbling, uh, this bubbling, as I said, generically uh, sphere bubbling should be shouldn't uh, be a problem. If you rule out this bubbling. Then you do have d to square to zero, and let me show an example where you, to, to show you that you you actually need you do actually need um, this. So I'll go again to t star of s one. Then um, I'll have my blue guy, and then I'll have my green guy that clearly bounds some disk that I claim has Maslow index 2. So the, these red and orange, these are uh, so L2. Bounds <laughs> Maslow equals two disk, and then in this case, again let me write here P and Q. If you work out this case, of course, this same as before, um, but um, but now, if you look 
if you look at this scenario, you see that d p is actually uh, u and the orange is going to be v. d p uh, is going to be, well, there is a 50% chance that I messed up which one is u and v, but I'll, I don't really want to think about that. So up to perhaps changing what u and v are, we do have that. Um, in particular, d does not square to 0. So, and that's, but what I want to mention now is that Fukaya Ota Ono um, they measured the obstruction No, it's not even defined. D square is not zero. Just, just in this example, or in, in this two-dimensional example. Okay. In, general, in general, no, no. In general, you could have Lagrangians that are non-displaceable, but uh, the flow homology is always zero. Uh, even with these local systems, and you could have also floor homology being zero, but this doesn't mean that you can displace them. So no, 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 there is no general result in this sort. Um, so, so foo, ah, this is, this is uh, also, if you are from our community, we always refer to them as foo or fo cube, cubed. Um, so they measured the obstruction to this, the, this square being 0. And this gives you, and now perhaps, um, this gives you elements on the, on the Fourier complex of Li with itself. <coughs> that um, um, for which what we have is that, so else is going to tell you that, we're go uh, that we actually have a lot of operations. Now I just told that we have this m0. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to use m or mu, but uh, then uh, m1 will be um, our differential. And then you have some sort of uh, product and then uh, that has two inputs and uh, and more uh, infinitely many operations like that, and then what you have is that um, d square of a point P becomes m two of uh, plus or minus m two of P with m zero uh, say l one. Perhaps here I should put L2. 2 plus uh, or minus, there's some signs always um, M0 of the first with P. And then, um, so the, the M0 actually has, um, uh, uh, M2 actually has a, a, um, a unity that that's related, essentially related with the fundamental class of L. That w it is the fundamental class of L. Um, but I didn't quite refine very carefully what I meant by that four complex, but um, I just want to mention that um, 
that often, and we we uh, we say that uh, I, we mean that L I R. The, the right way of saying this is L I R weakly unobstructed. So if, if you don't have if you don't have this kind of disks, we say that the Lagrangians are unobstructed. And then if you have uh, if we have what we call weakly unobstructed, we can think this essentially means that M zero of this guy is some oh why why not like W? Perhaps I like I'll write like this. Um, is a multiple of one. This is a unity for M2. This sort of product that we have. So in this case, uh, we refer to it as the superpotential, but it's weakly unobstructed. If this element here, I'm telling you there is a unit on uh, CF Li with itself. If this element here happens to be a multiple of the unity, we call it weakly unobstructed, and we call the multiple uh, W. And then, um, I'm calling it W, you can call, uh, but usually this uh, W uh, comes up as a notation. And um, so in this case, you can define Flora homology between L1 and L2, if and only if, um, so d squares to zero, if and only if these uh, numbers are the same. Okay? So perhaps I, I was somewhat. Um, efficient um, with time. So I want to, to finish. Uh, I kind of told you that, well, definitely for homology, I, I didn't need it to be Calabial. But um, mirror symmetry is also defined by um, uh, Zaxo extended for non-Calabial manifolds. So I'll give you a fun example. But I told you I'm not living one dimension, complex one dimension, so I'm going to work in CP1. Um, so here I have my, my CP1, my sphere. And then um, I'm, um, uh, I'm writing here L1, and perhaps I want to to call, so of course, uh, this L1 is obstructed because it bounds two disks that I that has Maslow index two. Um, and let's say that the red disk says area A1, and this has area. B1. And so I, 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 this is my L1, and then I have a similar L2. And then let me draw here. Let me come here. I'll draw for you L1. Here's L2. Of course, I'll, I'll have my points P and Q here. Then we definitely see um, two disks or pair, pair, pair of strips. 
that will be the red strips. So red strips that I want to compare. And um, the orange one. This orange strip here. I hope my. I shouldn't have drawn the back. Whatever. But I, I'm sure you can see. So you have. Um, we have these strips, then, uh, so perhaps I'll put an eye here. So they bound Maslow index zero D. So let's let's start now thinking about uh, that we have trivial connections. So I, I, I want to consider any sort of holonomy at first. Um, so what happens is uh, this M0 will be formed of L1 will be given by um, by the by these two disks by the count of these two disks in this example this is T to the A1 plus T to B1 and uh, and this will be equal to M0 L2, let me perhaps give some space when I introduce some connection. And, um, and this is T to A2 plus T to B2. So these two elements are equal in the, in the Nokov ring. If and only if, in the Nokov field, if and only if, uh, These areas are the same. Mm. So, I'll not work out in detail the differential. So you can see the differential of P, we will count, say, the, the red strips, and the differential of Q will count the orange strips or the other way around. But um, so suppose now you, we are in this case, right? You need this case to be able to, to have full homology. So suppose now we, we are in this case. Um, this case. So what we have is that, as I said, the, as I said briefly, say the differential of P We'll be counting, uh, why don't I write like, okay, differential of P will be plus or minus. It's hard to see what K1, P1, and R will say that. Oh, sure. So each one of these Lagrangians, they, it's here the picture. Each one of these Lagrangians, they bound two disks on the, on the sphere. They divide the sphere in two. One I'm calling A1, and the other I'm calling A2, the area of them. I mean, A1 and B1 for L1, A2 and B2 for L2. Yes, yes. And um, so provided that this, uh, that I can compute for homology for them, uh, we are. One is determined by the other, the area of the sphere. Yes, yes, area of the spheres, yes. Precise. So we, we actually we actually need one, but uh, I don't know. Depending on the way you write, perhaps your B one is equals to the A two or whatever. Of course. Um, so in this case, uh, you see that the area of the red disks will cancel out. So as I said, the P would be uh, would be T to the Red one minus t to the red two. So and uh, and similar dq will be plus or minus t to the orange one t to the orange two. And it's not hard to see that these these guys will cancel out. 
d will be equal to 0 if and only if actually your Lagrangian divides the sphere in half. <clears throat> So if you have a1 equals b1, a2 equals b2, so you'd have like orange plus red is equals to orange plus red, which is equal to this orange plus red, and then you figure, you figure out that this is 0 and this is 0. And um, so this means, and this is if and only if, oh, every time in our examples that we see that the four homology was different than 0, it was actually... Um, um, it's actually isomorphic to h tau of the circle. Uh, so, and as I said, it's not true, but in this case, this happens as uh, was pointed out by, um, by Davi. Well, if they divide the areas uh, in half, if they have the same areas, it means that, uh, oh, perhaps I should write down like this. If they, if they have the, the same areas, um, you do have that L1 just because of, of the dimension. So if they, if they have the same areas, we can have a area preserving isotopy between one and the other. That uh, will be, that's proven to be a Hamiltonian. And um, uh, uh, this case, uh, this case happens, uh, well, we, we know that L1 uh, and L2 are non-splaceable. What is, uh, let me write like this, non displaceable But what is the, what is uh, unique to, uh, this always happens when this is non-zero. But if this is zero, it wouldn't necessarily mean that they are displaceable, but it's true. And you can think, as I said, if, they, if this Lagrangian uh, uh, these Lagrangians that are comparable, they are actually essentially the same. And then if you think that you are in a Lagrangian that's not in the equator, you can rotate it to, to the other hemisphere using a Hamiltonian, and they are actually displaceable in this example. And uh, finally, in these two minutes, I just want perhaps not use a trivial local system. So um, here, of course, uh, pi 1 is one dimensional, so I can uh, identify my unitary local system with just uh, a number in, uh, in the circle. Okay, just what happens with monotomy there. Um, and so this. Uh, actually, I should write, the, 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 this is this times unit, but perhaps I should write with the W, but whatever. So this, up to perhaps you reorienting your space, this will have the form x1, because uh, it will be x1 if, if you go on the red disk, say I call it x1, then on the blue disk, uh, the holomorphic boundary is going on the other direction. So the, the, the multiplication here is by 1 over x1. And similar thing here. So after we twist our differential, let's say, by using this, this now, I mean, the non-trivial local system. Um, so uh, we force these two to be equals, which gives extra conditions on uh, also uh, the local system. So we will be able to compare only 
Li with uh, Li with delta one would have to be compared to L two with delta two if and only if these these two guys are the same. So there is a relation between x one equals x two or uh, one over x two. And um, I want to finish saying that this, as I mentioned to Vini, or this, we call, uh, oh, I mentioned to everyone, but we call the super potential that's given by this, uh, this Laurent polynomial that's encoding this obstruction of, this, of these fibers. And uh, it does play a role when you try to define mirror symmetry for uh, in the funnel case, because um, then uh, mirror symmetry will uh, will be um, what's called uh, given by what's called a landau gisbud model. This landau gisbud model uh, really uh, requires actually you to have a function on your mirror, and um, and. <clears throat> And if you recall that we try to construct the, uh, we construct the mirror as the space of these Lagrangians with respect to these connections, uh, this is the function that we expect to take as the as the superpotential to our landau gisbud model. So perhaps else we will have time to talk about that. Perhaps not. But this uh, I want to finish you giving you some sort of flavor that uh, actually mirror symmetry, how mirror symmetry can be extended away from, from, the, from the Calabial case. Uh, and I do want to finish here now.